disease. Little microbes that a doctor stood over here a few years ago when Mandy was so sick and I told him, I said, man, you're talking tribulation stuff. He said, we're in constant contact with the Centers for Disease Control. We're watching this infection. And he said, I watched it under a microscope. Those things do not have sex. They just produce others. And they're intelligent. They defend against antibiotics. They've undoubtedly, you're shaking your head, Donna. I get, they got, they're smart, ain't they? And when biological chemicals really may be used, and human bodies start falling victim to something that would make the black death and the plague of the Middle Ages look like the, a simple cold. We're getting quiet in God's house. Now, if you're thinking you're scaring the children, well, why, why, do you, why don't you stop them from watching some of them television shows then? You think they don't get scared watching some of them horror movies? Why won't you stop them from watching the zombies? Then people get offended at a preacher like me to preach the truth. Let me tell you, young people, it's going to be okay. Your parents will take care of you, but greater than that, God will take care of you, and all of us are going to end up at a better place one of these days because we're not appointed to wrath. You're still looking at an old-time pre-millennial, pre-tribulation. I'm listening for the shout. I'm listening for the trumpet to sound. Before the fire falls, I'm like old Lot. I might be backslid, but he gonna get me out of this mess before the fire ever falls. I got me a guaranteed ticket to get out of here before his wrath. Now then, you've got the blood of the lamb. You've got the tears of the lamb. But in Revelation 6, you've got the wrath of the lamb. Boy, the blood of the lamb will wash you clean. Tears of the lamb will keep you safe because he's watching you all the time. And when the lamb weeps, oh, you know his compassion and you know his strength and you know that he'll help you. But let's glance just a little bit at uh, 2 Timothy chapter 3. And we'll be brief in these. 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse, well, verse 1. This know also that in the last days, perilous, dangerous, horribly dangerous times shall come. For men will be lovers of their own selves. Bingo. Covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, without natural affection, truce breakers, false accusers, incontinent, fierce, I hate it that we're living in a day when some young people have to be intimidated by going to school because of some of the violence. I thought when they got rid of the paddle, they'd get rid of the violence. But now they'll beat you down and a bunch of them, will, they won't call her to teach her. They'll film it on their phone. And they think it's cool somebody stomping on somebody's head that's already down and beaten. When all these things begin to come to pass, look at verse seven, ever learning. <laughs> Never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. So the first thing we discussed here briefly, peace and perilous times. Now, the teachings of the truth. Did you know Jesus said some things about prophecy? Uh, look at Luke 21. Turn your Bible to Luke 21. And we'll just glance at a verse or two here. Luke chapter number 21. And this is what is referred to as the temple discourse. Luke 21. You may want to get a shot at that and study that. That's the teachings of the truth. Jesus is the truth. He said in John 16, 33, in the world you'll have tribulation, but be of good cheer, I've overcome the world. So part of the truth is a recognition and an acceptance of the fact that tribulation and bad things are going to happen and eventually going to cycle around to me. But then he said, be of good cheer, though, I've overcome the world. You don't know peace like the peace you'll have in the midst of a violent storm. And you don't know purpose and reality until you know it in the midst 
of tribulations and troubles. So Luke 21, you got the temple discourse, Jesus talking about prophecy and end time things in Luke 21. Then the disciples were so interested in what he taught them and what he said there on the temple ground that later when they had retired for the night up on Mount Olives, they'd go down, traveling east, down through the Lion Gate, out through the Kidron Valley, up on the Mount Olives. Now, and, and then they came to him privately in Matthew 24 and said, Lord, tell us more. So Matthew 24 then is known as the Olivet Discourse. But here in Luke 21, he said in these verses, a few highlights, you're gonna be persecuted. They're not gonna love you. (laughs) They're not gonna respect you. They hated me, they're gonna hate you. So you've got persecution. But then verse 19, he said likewise to him, be thou also, Noah chapter 21, I'm in the wrong chapter. Uh, Verse 19, in your patience, Possess ye your souls. I bragged on y'all's patience a few minutes ago. And no matter what's happening historically, culturally, morally, socially, politically, economically, whatever earthly situation, you know no matter what's happening, you know who is gonna be with you. And he'll always be the same. And he'll never leave you. Now in verse 20 and forward, Jesus is speaking in about 33 AD and he says, When you see Jerusalem compassed with armies, know that the desolation thereof is nigh. Interestingly, ladies and gentlemen, history proves this. You've got the writings of Jesus. You've got them all reserved. You've got Roman history. In 67 AD, Jerusalem was compassed with uh, with the Roman army. Titus and his men put a siege around the city and then they left because Jesus said, get out of it and don't come into it. Some of the unbelievers and deniers and scoffers, they told the apostles, if your man Jesus said, so what, it's compassed with armies. He said, get out and let let them not come in. That shows how crazy Jesus, well, Jesus must not have been too crazy. He prophesied the city would be compassed, didn't he? And yet people can see the reality of faith and deny it. That's evidence that there is evil in the world, that there is a devil. Due to severe threats of barbarians in the north, the Roman army broke the siege and left. And some of the unbelievers thought we're safe. But Jesus said, Jerusalem will be trodden down of the Gentiles. When you see it come past, get out and don't let anybody come in for destruction's coming. Are you gonna believe Jesus or not? If you're just gonna believe him for the saving of the soul and then not believe him to be the Lord of the life, then what's that? But the same word that brought you faith is the same word that will bring you guidance and direction. Walking in the light. When the Romans broke camp and left, the zealots were rejoicing with victory. Titus the general thought to himself, you'll shout one of these days, I'll be back. They didn't know it, but Jesus did. You better believe what the Lord says, and I hope we do. 70 AD, the city was literally, utterly destroyed they burn it to the ground Jesus said about the temple there will not be one stone left upon another that won't be thrown down so he prophesied against their religious prowess the very men that put the kangaroo court together and falsely accused Jesus of blasphemy and put him on the cross 30 years later 